is Conti doing this whole system or are you working with someone to do this with another company? Oh, that's all Conti. Okay. So we're working on, that's why we are also looking into the automated driving. We're working on the, let's say, the full chain of things you need for automated driving. We have the sensors, mm -hmm. some of them are on the car, yes. more of them have been discussed in the tent. Uh, we work on the software that actually makes the car drive. We have the actuators, so the steering, the brake system, and our colleagues from Interior in this case, they also have means to look at how the interaction goes. So the display, the halo, the sound, it's yes. also from our colleagues from Conti. So because we want to know in a couple of years, how will such cars look like? What do they need? Right. And for example, the interaction of the driver is something they will need more than today's cars do. I will also now show you what happens if something in the car is not working as planned. I will simulate this by switching off one of our components in the car. The car needs to recognize that there's something going on, needs to warn me. And then if I ignore this warning, it needs to again do something. So, let's go and stand by. Back in blue now. Blue. And blue is automated. It was automated? Purple was standby. Red means you're in trouble and you need to go to the other side of the road. Red is a warning. So now I switch off here one of our components. You see the warnings? Yes. So there's a, we call it a safety supervisor. It's just recognized that there's something wrong. And now I did not do anything. I ignored all these warnings. And of course, in reality, these warnings would be a lot longer. This is, we had to compress it because we have to turn around. Sure. So the, the, the idea is, the car knows there's something wrong. It still can drive, it needs to be able to drive, there needs to be a redundancy. But it doesn't want to go on driving for, I don't know, 20 miles or something. Right. And also there's no shoulder available. So the very last resort would be to stop in the ego lane. That's nothing the car wants right. to do. The target is that the driver needs to take over, but only as a last resort. But you had your emergency brake lights on and you yes. stopped. So and also you need to look at surrounding traffics, of course. If there's a truck behind you, you wouldn't brake as hard and stuff. So the thing is, you need to have the, the major parts of the system redundant. The brakes, for example, the sensors. Maybe you wouldn't have like twice the same radar, but you would have, let's say, complementary sensors so that if one out of three brakes, the other two could still keep up the functionality. So in this case, the car could decide, okay, I can still function, but I don't want to continue driving endlessly. In how this case, the driver is informed and needs to take over. How long before we see this on the road? So we expect that around 2020, so in a couple of years, right. there will be systems that will look like this. Or